So one thing that has frustrated me with MakerBot's uh, marketing videos for the MakerBot Method X is that we don't actually get to see the printer printing in action. We get to see the result of the printing, like they'll open up the door and take out all the pretty parts and show off what the printer actually produced, but we don't get to see uh, the MakerBot method actually in action printing. And fair enough, uh, there's not many other videos on the internet that show it printing as well. So I kind of want to show off uh, it printing today for you. So I've loaded in this uh, 3D model right here. This is known as the gripper. It was released by MakerBot uh, when the MakerBot method was originally released. And it is a good print because it's complicated. It's large. It has movable parts, as you can see here, the gears and the hand crank that move the gears. Uh, it's a print in place assembly, 3D model uh, that uses support and is really a good test of the printer's uh, capability in terms of the dimensionally accurate accuracy of its printing. So let's get this going. I'm in MakerBot Cloud Print here, which has been working awesome for me. And I go over here to my settings. I've opened up my expert settings. I'm going to go into uh, the quick settings. This base layer is usually set to raft by default. Well, I'm going to change it to none. And then go over to the print mode and put it on balanced. So that's the only thing I'm going to do to set this up to start printing. So I'm going to uh, queue this up start it printing, and then I'll be back periodically to check its progress. I'll videotape some of its printing, the printing in action, so you can see, and we'll see how this turns out. So hopefully <clears throat> I don't have any uh, jams detected or any, any other errors, so we'll see. We'll be back. All right, so here we can see the chamber is heating up. ADC is the target temperature. And then the extruders will kick on and heat up, and then it'll start printing. Here we are about 6% done. It's a long way to go, obviously, but this isn't printing. Looks like it laid down the first layer of ABS. And then on top of it, the SR30. So, so far, so good. Seems to be sticking well, no peeling or anything like that. So a long way to go. All right, time to check in. Here it is printing. We're at 29%, 29% and it's progressing well. We see a little lifting right there in the front left part of this gripper. But I think it'll be okay, because that initial layer that's laid down, the very first layer is uh, that blue ABS. And then on top of that is the white support, SR30. And then from that point forward goes uh, this 3D printed object. So the initial layer there is the uh, blue ABS. X as a type of raft. Um, I did turn off the raft setting in the slicer but it still lays down that initial layer anyhow. Um, with the raft layer on, it's just a much more uh, thicker, robust raft layer. So anyway, looks good. So it's going to take a while. So we'll, we'll keep cranking here and check in. But yeah, please so far. There's been no jams or errors detected. I haven't had to stop or pause or anything. So... All right, so we're at 85% complete now. Let's have a look. And this is it, printing. Uh, we still have that lifting on the left uh, corner of that gripper, but hasn't gotten any worse, and it, it appears to be okay. Uh, the part is certainly not gonna fall off completely, so I'm not worried about it. And it's been printing well. Again, look how clean the interior of the build chamber is. 
no whisks of uh, filament, no furriness, no stray pieces of filament. Looks awesome. So we're doing good. We're doing good. And uh, I will come back when it's complete and show you the final product. And then it'll go into our uh, heated, you know, water agitation and it will remove the SR30 supports and we will have a final product and we'll test to see if the movable parts move with ease and how the mechanical uh, part of the gripper works. So I'm very happy with this so far. Using the Labs ex Experimental Extruder, anybody who, are, who has having trouble with clogs or grinding a filament or any errors, I would recommend highly trying that Labs Experimental Extruder. Um, I know it's an additional purchase. I think it's $350 currently, but I was fortunate enough that my MakerBot Method X came with it free. It was a package deal, so it wasn't an additional expense for me, so I was very lucky. Otherwise, I don't know if I would have this machine printing, so. All right, we'll be back in a little while for an update. One thing I wanted to add is um, I scrolled over on my touch screen here to see the exact time it's reportedly gonna be done. So quarter to 10 a.m. And uh, it's about 7.20 a.m. now currently. So it'll be interesting to see how accurate this time is uh, when it's going to be done so we'll, we'll we'll check on that too all right it looks like this print is finished so this is my screen after the print is done I'm gonna click on done here um, take a look at it here it is so it ended up finishing an hour after its reported time so it was supposed to get done, I think at 9.44 or something. It got done an hour after that. So that's not bad. I can live with an hour past its reported finish time. So, and there it is. Looks nice and clean in there. Let's pull it out and have a closer look. Look at this. Looks gorgeous. Awesome print. Of course, we won't know until we wash away the supports and the agitation, but this is what we got here. There's your prime tower. So I don't know, what do you think? Looks good to me. We'll have to see uh, when we wash away the supports how well these gears rotate and how well this uh, robotic arm mechanism, they, they keep, I keep calling it robotic, but it's the gripper. It's the gripper model from MakerBot. Um, we'll have to see how this works. So the only thing that I saw here in terms of like lifting off of the build plate was again, that front left part there and maybe on the right it's hard to tell but it you know it lifted a little bit there <clears throat> but I don't think it affected any printing quality or anything on it so um, on large prints well I'm gonna do a couple things I'm gonna try to increase the internal temperature of the build chamber from about 80 C to 90 C. See if that helps with uh, adhesion so that nothing lifts. Other than that, I have a, uh, a chemical solution that I can put on uh, the build tack here, uh, platform to prevent it from lifting. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this off and put it in my agitation, wash away the supports 
and I'll report back how this works. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. So I did want to show uh, the build platform after I released or removed the part. Um, it came out relatively easy. I didn't have to use any scrapers or anything. Um, and it didn't leave the surface damaged in any way. So one thing that I'm sure to do in between prints is to clean this off with some um, rubbing alcohol wipes to make sure there's no grease or anything on the build platform that might prevent the 3D printed object from sticking. So there it is. Agitation time. So I have the timer set to six hours. So after six hours, this will uh, turn off. I have the water temperature set to a target of 60 C and lift the lid here. And there's the MakerBot gripper happily floating and dissolving the supports. So we'll let this run and then we'll see the result from it. Good stuff. All right, so here's the gripper. It spent six hours in the agitation. Agitation did a nice job removing the supports. And this is what the result is. And so I was shaking this on the bench, on the table here, getting the solution out of it, trying to drip dry it. And lo and behold, okay, right off the bat, we have a broken piece. So this is supposed to be the knob that you turn, which in turn moves a small gear. You can see that, which moves a bigger gear and then moves a bigger gear yet. Okay. So I didn't muscle it super hard. I didn't put any tools on here. I simply tried to turn it by hand and it snapped right off the bat. Now the second problem I had is these gears fresh out of the solution were sort of fused together. It was very, very close, very close. And I tried to loosen it to get these to turn. And lo and behold, I broke the other axle. All right. So that broke. Now let's see this one right here. This one on the right appears to be frozen as well. Um, I know it's an awkward position because I'm holding my phone, but I've tried this before and this does not readily rotate. So that doesn't work. So we're left with a broken item here uh, that's non-functional and didn't give me the desired outcome, obviously. So again, this was a STL file. It was an STL provided by MakerBot when the MakerBot method X first came out. It was to showcase the accuracy printing of the printer. Uh, it just barely fits on the build plate. I mean, it's edge to edge on the build plate. And you kind of have to um, carefully place the prime tower in a position where it'll fit, right? So I still use prime tower for this because I wanted a very accurate print that would hopefully work. And you were able to drag and drop in the software, uh, the prime tower to place it where it's appropriate. So it's not gonna hit the model or whatever. Um, so there's just some adjustment, but yeah. Um, I am a little bit disappointed that this didn't come out. This would have been a nice product to showcase um, the MakerBot Method X. Blue material is ABS and the supports are SR30. So I don't know. I will revisit this at another time with the MakerBot Method X. Uh, perhaps over time I will learn more about how to adjust the settings and maybe get this to print uh, completely so that's operational. So I don't know what the issue, I don't know if it was a tolerance issue, if there wasn't enough clearance between parts, movable parts or whatever, but yeah. 
So I'll consider this uh, video done for now. And I will plan to, you know, release more videos about the MakerBot Method X printing, in particular ABS and SR30 support. So look for those. But I appreciate it. Take care, folks.